What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in my studio in Sedalia, and today I'm doing a video about microscope anatomy. So this is part of our microscopy and mycology playlist. If you're interested in learning more about microscopes and mushrooms, check out our playlist, subscribe to our channel, and give us a thumbs up. Okay, so you can see I have two different types of microscopes in front of me here. They're essentially the same. There's some differences if you want to take a look at the video I did on two different types of microscopes in mycology. It will talk about the differences between the stereoscope, which is this tan one on my right, and the compound microscope, which is this blue and white amscope on my left. So I can kind of break down the different parts of the microscope. Starting off from the top to the bottom, you have the ocular lens. So the ocular lens is a piece of glass that's concaved to focus light from the objective lens through the, the head of the microscope into your eye. And now there's different types of ocular lenses. Um, usually they're about a 10x, a 10x magnification, but this one comes with 25x. So when you're trying to find your total magnification, it's important that you notice what magnification is on the ocular because this one, yeah, it comes with a 10x option or a 25x depending on the resolution you're looking for. And this Amscope in particular, which is on my Amazon affiliate page, it comes with this really awesome camera which will hook up to my laptop. So I'll talk about that in later videos but it actually replaces the ocular with this really nifty camera. And the cameras these days have come a long way since I worked in the hospital labs. So I recommend getting the digital camera if you're going to buy a compound scope these days. So another feature that often is on these ocular lenses is there's usually a pointer. And in some cases, there is, there's a, a calibrated line. Now those are used mostly for teaching or if you're taking precise observations, you can use the pointer to point out a feature in the cell or you can use that little line to calibrate against a micrometer and then that way you can measure the cell. Now the, the latest microscopes with these cameras, you don't need that um, line because you can measure on the computer program so it's not necessary unless you're using an older microscope. But another you know, feature with the, the ocular lens is that it can kind of adjust to the width of your eyes. So it's important to just know all the features of your microscope. It's a, it's a really nice thing to you know, have comfort while you're looking down the scope. Okay, and another thing I wanna point out is the different options for ocular lenses. So there's a, a monocular lens, which is just a single scope. So those are usually a little bit cheaper. There's less maintenance, less moving parts. Um, that's the basic microscope, but this is a binocular lens. So there's two of them. There's a, often a trinocular. So they'll have a single lens coming out the top that you can put the camera on. And that way you can use both the oculars to kind of hone in your space and then have a separate um, lens for the camera. And then they also make uh, the, the quadruple oculars. I'm not really sure on the, on the terminology of that, but the, the, the double stand microscopes or the double ocular microscopes, and those are for teaching. So you can have one person cruising around the slide and then the other person is just observing and you can talk back and forth, which is really useful for learning microscopy. Now, if you look at this, uh, the stereo microscope to my right here, it just has a basic binocular lens. Um, it does look like these do come out, but they are 10 X's as well, a little bit dirty. So I'll do some maintenance on this one in the next video. But I just wanted to point out that this one kind of adjusts a little bit differently. And you can move 
this ocular in a 360 motion so that if you wanted to stand closer to the sample, you can stand over here. Okay, so now moving down the microscope, we have our head and arm. So these are really important features of the microscope. I like the AM scopes because they have really solid arms. This one is, is pretty solid, but it has this coarse adjustment that is kind of like right in the middle of the arm where I would hold the microscope. So whenever you're holding your microscope or transporting it, it's really important to hold it with one hand in the arm and the other hand at the base. That way you have a really solid grip. I like the compound microscope here because it has this really nice handle in the arm as opposed to this coarse adjustment that kind of, you know, makes that whole ocular go up and down. So then moving down even further is the objective lens. So this is probably the most valuable part of the microscope and it's the part that you should pay most attention to and you should take the most care to, you know, protect these objective lenses. On this compound scope here, there's four different objective lenses and they each have a different magnification. So they go anywhere from 10X all the way to 40X. And then there is a 100X oil immersion lens. So that one is very unique. Um, this microscope comes with immersion oil. And what that does is it creates a concave, almost like a, a glass sphere or an oil sphere around that objective lens. So it will prevent light from deflecting and it makes it so that you can observe a cell with that really, really fine focus. Otherwise, it's going to look too dark when you're magnifying up to a thousand X, then you're losing a lot of those light waves that are coming from the light source. So the 100X lens, you're supposed to always use oil immersion and make sure that you don't mix oil immersion on the other lenses because it could be a real pain to clean. But you know, that's a feature of the compound microscope. So if I go over to the stereoscope, the stage is in place. So this one comes with this unique glass cover. So you can allow light to go through the sample, which in this case is just a Petri dish. But the main difference between the stereoscope and the compound scope is going to be the stage and the arm mobility. So going down the microscope even further, we have our adjustment knobs. So there's a coarse adjustment on the compound, and then there's a fine adjustment, which is a little bit further out. This is really important when you're fine tuning and you're looking at the nucleus of a cell or different flagella, which are very delicate and require, you know, a fine focus. Whereas the stereoscope has such a large field of view that you don't really need a fine focus. And it just has this really large coarse, this really large coarse knob for focusing. And honestly, it's probably fine if you just leave it all the way down you're going to be able to see what you're looking for. So moving down past the stage, there is the light source. So this is a really important feature of both of these microscopes. And you can find there's often light adjustments on the, the sides of the stage. So you can adjust the different strength of the light. Uh, both of these have LED lights which is really good because you don't have to worry about replacing that bulb and kind of taking that apart. The light source is what allows you to observe the sample. It shoots rays through the sample, through the objective, through the head of the microscope, and through the ocular lens into your eyeballs. So you can't really use a microscope without a light source. Some of the more primitive microscopes they would use a candle or mirrors to deflect sunlight into your eye. But nowadays, the technology has come a long way and we can even adjust the different light to the comfort of your eye. So then I guess the last part of the anatomy of the microscope is going to be the base. 
So this one has a really solid base with some rubber stoppers on it. And then also the power source and all the electrical components are located inside the base. And once again, the stereo microscope, the base is connected to the stage. So it's really solid. Um, I recommend always keeping your microscopes on a solid surface so you, you don't get vibrations when you're observing. When you go to store your microscope, this one comes with a really fancy case and then this one comes with a cover so whenever your microscope is not in use it's always a good idea to use a cover this one is a just a plastic um i think it has an anti-dust it's an anti-dust you know just plastic cover and it prevents dust from getting into the oculars like on this one here so this, this microscope comes with a case, and then this one just comes with a little slip cover that you can put over the microscope while it's not in use. Just like that. All right, guys, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. I'll be doing a bunch more microscopy videos. I just wanted to start as basic as possible um, just to give everyone an overview. If you're interested in purchasing this microscope in particular, I left the link in the description below. You'll also want to get some stain, uh, some, some oil for the oil immersion, and uh, Kim wipes for maintenance. So my next video is going to be maintenance on these microscopes and then we will dive into uh, preparing slides, making observations, and uh, much much more. The applications for microscopes in mycology are endless so I'm super excited to be able to finally do these videos that I've been putting off for years. <laughs> okay guys, until next time, much love.